Well, if I get rid of Woody Woodpecker, I'm going to stay here and paint. Paula's going home to see her folks. Uh, hey, Hi, Eric. Paula. I hear you're going home to visit your folks. Oh, did Dick tell you about the baby? The baby? Hmm. The baby? Paula. Paula, you're going to have a baby! Is it a secret or can I tell the fellas? Harry, Harry, Harry. Simmer down for just a minute. It's not me who's having the baby. Yeah. My mother's having the baby. <laughs> Your mother is having a baby? Mm -hmm. Congratulate me, Harry. I'm about to have a nine-pound brother-in-law. Please excuse me. I gotta iron my dress for the trip. Sure. Except with all these distractions around here, I'm never gonna get any painting done. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean, boy. These distractions here can be murder when you're trying to concentrate. Hey, I tell you what I'll do. Dick, I'll come back every half hour or so. I'll make sure that nobody up there is distracting you. Bye. See you later, Dick. Dick, I said I'll see you later. I'll see you later, Harry. Good. Dow Jones averages are off a point and a half. Rails are up an eighth, but industrials are down two. Yes, I'm fine, thank you, Murray. <laughs> Andrew, I'd like to meet my accountant, Murray Mouse. Murray Mouse, Andrew Hummel. You? Hummel! Hummel, that's a German name, isn't it? Mouse! Mouse! That's a Disney name, isn't it? <laughs> What are you doing here, Murray? Hey, I need your signature right away. What for? Well, your estimated tax for the quarter. Here. Sign it so you don't miss the deadline. When's the deadline? Last night. <laughs> Thank you, Murray. Oh, don't mention it. That's what accountants are for. Mm. Hey, that's the... That's not bad. You do that? Well, it's just the beginning, Murray. How long did it take you to get this far? Let's see. Uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, about eight months. <laughs> You see, Murray, it's very hard to work at home. There are a lot of distractions here. <laughs> Why don't you come on vacation with me? You'll paint in the woods overlooking the most beautiful lake in America. Where are you going? I don't know yet. <laughs> I got a choice of two places. What are the two places? Eighteen fifty and eleven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You're incredible, Murray. The only thing you know about the hotels are the rates. Oh, hiya, Murray. Hi, Paula. This is Andrew. Before I forget. Here is a list of things that I would like for you to take care of before I come back. Miss Hollister, you can cross that peephole off of there. <laughs> right. Right. Cross off, install peephole, put on fixed front door. Well, if he does half of the things on that list, I'll never be able to get a moment's peace. Murray, Murray, can I afford to go away and paint for nine days? Mr. Hollister, if it's economy you're thinking about, I know of a quaint little cabin up in the Adirondacks that's available. He can't afford it. It's called Hummel's Hideaway. Well, Andrew, I didn't know you owned a cabin. My daddy, Jason Hummel, built it. Uh, was he as good with tools as you are? That man taught me everything I know. Forget it. Right up your alley, seven fifty a day. Hey, let me see. Seven fifty a day for nine days. That would come out to Murray at sixty-seven fifty. <laughs> Murray at sixty-seven fifty. Sixty-seven fifty. Sixty-seven fifty for what? But to rent Andrew's cabin for nine days. Yeah, it'd be great. I could go away and paint for nine days. It'd be the cheapest vacation I ever had. Could be even cheaper. Find someone nice to share it with, and that would come out to well. Uh... Oh no, no, Murray. If uh, if I'm going to go away, I want to go away alone. Well, why do you want to be all alone in a cabin up in the mountains? Yeah, yeah, Murray's right. I mean, Dick, I don't think you'd enjoy it up there all by yourself. Who'd cook for you? I can cook. Who'd clean the place for you? I can clean. In the daytime, it'd be okay, but during the night, who could you talk to? I could talk. I think it's the best thing to do, Dick. Andrew? It's all set. Paula, Paula, don't you realize what you're doing? You're sticking me with Murray for nine days. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. It's all right, it's all right. I'll get out of it somehow. Okay. That's all settled. Uh, Murray, gee, I, I hate to impose on you. I mean, I know you want to go away by yourself. You didn't even ask your wife, so obviously you want to be alone. Besides, you don't be cooped up in a cabin with me for nine days. I drive you crazy, painting all day, 
all that noise, the brush scratching on the canvas. And, oh, I, I keep a light on very late at night reading. Oh, and I cough. <coughs> Dick, I've been your accountant for eight years now. And you're the nicest, kindest, most decent person I've ever known. Now, don't worry about me. I'm only interested in you having a good time. <laughs> what time do we leave in the morning, Mom? <laughs> How are things at the monastery, Murray? Are you just about ready? I left my luggage downstairs. No use carrying it up, then carrying it down again. Murray, if your luggage matches what you're wearing, I'm not going. <laughs> Who is it? Why don't you use your peephole and find out? That's what <laughs> Ah, Jason Hummel's boy. <laughs> Mr. Hollis now, come to help you take your things down to the car. Now, uh, wait a minute, I'll get you the keys to my car. Already got one. You got a key to my car? Nope, to mine. That's the one we're taking. Just a minute. If you don't mind, we'd like to drive up alone. Just give me the directions. There aren't any. Why, well, I call it my hideaway. Carved right out of the wilderness. Can't find it myself sometimes. <laughs> take that stuff. Here, yeah, I'll give you a hand, Andrew. Oh, you'll catch a lot of fish dressed like that, Murray. <laughs> You're a living lure. <laughs> Paula, we're going now. Hey, you realize this is the first time we've been separated since we've been married? It's something, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't I stay and drive you to the airport? Oh, honey, my plane doesn't take off until after work tonight. You'd lose a whole day. Now, have a good time and paint good. I'm not going. <laughs> hey, why don't you come up to the cabin with me? What will you do with your little friend, Murray the Mouse? <laughs> Send him home to see your mother. <laughs> nice time, and I'll see you in nine days. the Flintstones? Too cheap, Mr. Hollister, too cheap. Well, I guess I'll have to fix that door before I go home. We'll take care of the door. Where are we going? You're going back to the city as you promised me. Guess I'll mosey along. <laughs> well, if you'd let him stop and fix that door, he'd be here the whole nine days. Bite your tongue, Murray. Bite your tongue. <laughs> Where do you want to sleep, Murray? Upper or lower? Lower. Okay. <laughs> You take the lower dick, I have a sleeping bag. Murray, you're on vacation. Why are you working? Who's working? I'm writing a letter to my wife. <laughs> you're writing a letter on an adding machine? It saves the cost of a typewriter. <laughs> my wife and I have a code. Love, Murray. <laughs> hey, still got a couple of hours of daylight left. Oh, good, you didn't start painting, huh? What are you gonna be doing? Oh, now, don't worry about me. Remember the deal we made? I do what I want to do, and you do what you want to do, and then we won't get in each other's way. I'll paint. Good. I'll watch. <laughs> no, no, Murray. The one thing I don't want you to do is watch. You see, the main reason I came up here was to get away from Andrew. He drove me crazy with his watching. Uh, say no more. He drove me crazy coming up here in the car.
anybody to home? <laughs> you like for lunch? Anything you cook for lunch is all right with me. No, I can't cook for myself. I have to cook for somebody else. All right. If Vincent Van Gogh had you two around, he would have cut off both his ears. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not up here on vacation. He's no fun to be with. <laughs> all right, what about the car? Gay put. And the LaSalle battery's hard to come by in these parts. <laughs> I'll have to hike over to Ed Crowley's place and talk him into riding me into town and pick up a new one. Why can't Ed Crowley just ride over here and give you a push? With a horse? <laughs> I'd better shave if I'm going over to Ed Crowley's. Ed's a dandy. Yeah. I'd bring my overnight kit. Oh, here, use mine. Much obliged. Oh, sorry, only nine shaves left. And we're going to be here nine days. You mean you count how many shaves there are in a can of lather? Well, doesn't everybody? Uh, sure, there's 86 and three-fourths shaves in an economy can of lather. What if you got a mustache? Then you get 92. Uh, you ought to grow a mustache, huh? Maybe you ought to grow a beard. Then you wouldn't have to buy any lather at all. Hey, at 98 cents a can over a 20-year period, that could be quite a saving. You sound. Ah, but your wife wouldn't let you wear a beard anyway. Yeah, I suppose yours would? Your dad told me she would. Matter of fact, she used to have a beard. Shaved it off just before I got married. Why? She told me to. Mm. <laughs> well, I'll bet you Minnie would let me wear one. Bet you she would. I'll bet you she would. She would. I'll bet you she bet would. You you you... Lock, 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 lock. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. You two are driving me out of my mind. Why don't you just go ahead and grow a beard? It's not a matter of whether your wife will let you grow a beard or not. It's a man's right to grow one if he wants to. Look who's talking. He doesn't even have a beard. I've noticed that. Well, if I wanted to grow one, I certainly wouldn't have to ask Paula's permission. I'd like to propose a little wager. For the next nine days, we three will grow our beards. Then when we get back to town, we'll see who has to shave his off first. Right. All right, you're on. <laughs> now, after you decide what you'd like for lunch, what do you think you'd like for dinner? Paula? Paula? Must have gone out to the store. Put that stuff down there. Paula shouldn't leave the lights on like this. That's why your electric bill is so high. Uh -huh. I have to call my wife. Can I use your phone? Sure. That's why my phone bill is so high. <laughs> hey, Dick, you home? Just walked in, Harry. Yeah. Paula got back two hours ago. She went down to the supermarket to pick up a few things, and you grew a beard. <laughs> hey, look at that. You know something? I like it. Hey, all three of you grew beards. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I... I grow a beard once. It looked just like Murray's. Yeah? Why'd you shave it off? I just told you. <laughs> Hello, darling. It's me. Murray. <laughs> now, back. I'm up at Dick. Hey, I, uh... I grew a beard. Same to you. <laughs> so, did you get any painting done? Did you have a good time? Harry, it was a barrel of laughs. We never had so much... All right, come on. <laughs> well, I guess I'd uh, better get down to my apartment and tell my wife I've been away for nine days. Wouldn't want her to worry. That's <laughs> I'll mosey along. Being away with Murray and Andrew for nine days was worse was worse than being away with Murray and Andrew for nine days. I do like the beard. I'd grow one, but the chief says they're a fire hazard.
You've got a better surprise than me. <laughs> you grew a... a, a Beard. Right. <laughs> you look so... Uh, distinguished? No, uh... uh sexy. <laughs> Hairy? Mm, different. <laughs> you look very, very different. Mmm. -hmm. Come here. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Dick. I, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I, I'm. I, I don't know what's the matter with me. I. I, mean, I got this kind of nervous reaction to it. <laughs> Come on. I'm all right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, you come on now. Come on. I'm sorry, honey. I don't know what's the matter. I can't help it now. I just am not used to it. Would you just let me touch it first? <laughs> Get acquainted with the little fellow. <laughs> careful. Careful. I want you two to be friends. <laughs> You know what it's like? A very cold lake. You gotta just, you gotta just jump right in. I like it. Hello, I'm glad to see you. Well, hello, I'm glad to see you. So, tell me about your trip. How's your mother? Oh, she just fine. The doctor said it'll be about six weeks yet. She sends you her love. Good. Oh, what about your painting? Did you get any painting done? Uh-huh. The painting part of the trip was a total disaster. I finished one painting and almost killed two men. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. I should have killed them. Well, what about the one painting? Could you show that to me? No, no, it's all wrapped up with my own thing. I, I don't want to show it to you now. Okay, okay. <laughs> What made you want to grow the beard? We made a bet to see which wife would let her husband keep his beard the longest. I hope you come in first. <laughs> well, I'm sure he won't come in third. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope, Paula. Well, I guess it's uh, between you and Andrew now. What? What? Uh, Minnie said if I came home with a beard, she'd stop shaving her legs. <laughs> You know what time it is? 7.15. Something special for someone special. You gonna stand there and talk about it all night? Come on. You know what time it is? 7.15.30. I'm so glad you like my knife. <laughs> oh, Gesundheit. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, bless you. Bless you. Are you coming down with a cold? Sorry, I don't think so. Maybe I'm allergic to something. Wait, let me get a Kleenex. Wouldn't it be funny if I was allergic to your beard? Where are you going? I'm going to shave. Oh, yeah. oh, you said, wouldn't it be funny if I was allergic to your beard? I didn't say I was allergic to your beard. I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's that? <laughs> Coming, 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 coming. Mr. Hollister, I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not yet. Hollister, <laughs> you're a gentleman and I'm a gentleman, and heaven knows a wager is a wager. But there are certain times in a man's life when precedence must be taken, especially in times of great need. I don't know whether I'm making myself clear or not. Yes, yes, you're making yourself very clear, Andrew. Let's shave and call it a draw. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, Mr. Hollister. Yes? 
suggest you shave off your beard with an electric razor. I don't have an electric razor. That's pity. Why? Well, the pipes are broken and there's no water on your floor. <laughs> sneezing, no sniffles, no watery eyes. No, I guess I was allergic to your beard. I'm cured. I promise I'll never grow another beard again. Okay. Listen, I see you've unpacked everything. Can I see your painting? All right, sit down. Okay. I painted this the last day I was there. Oh, it's a self-portrait. Oh, Dick, it's good. It really is. It's just wonderful. And you know something else? We'll always be able to remember exactly what you look like with a beard. 